Hello and welcome to another episode of AA Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this IBM ThinkPad Model 380ED. So last year I meant to make a video on this laptop, but I completely forgot. I put it in storage um, and then I never made the video. So today I took it out and I was determined to get this video made. Um, so that is exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but before we get started, there's something that I want to show you guys. And it's actually pretty cool. Check out the way this case is designed. Um, it has this really neat suspension system for the laptop. Uh, so when you put the case down, it's actually not smashing the back of the laptop. As you can see, um, the laptop itself is suspended off the bottom of the case. Um, so if you take the case, uh, put it vertically, you can see that the laptop itself never touches the ground. Um, so that's great uh, if you drop the case or something or you know how you're always putting your laptop bag down uh, If you just put it down, you know moderately hard It's not going to do anything because that suspension system is protecting the laptop uh, and I thought that was a pretty cool case design I have never seen that before uh, In my lifetime actually I've never seen anything like this um, So I thought this was pretty cool uh, and I think more laptop bags should be designed like this. This is a really neat concept. Um, so that's enough of that anyway. Let's go ahead and get to the main point of this video, which is taking a look at this IBM ThinkPad 380ED. Um, so I got this last year during Christmas. One of my relatives gave it to me um, kind of as a Christmas gift, I guess you could say. Um, they said they had a couple old computers, and then they brought this one down. And I was really, really happy because I love um, the IBM ThinkPad uh, just line of laptops. I think they're absolutely wonderful laptops. Uh, they perform well. They are built solid. Uh, this thing is like a rock. Uh, and of course, you will see that during this little overview. So let's go ahead and take this thing out. It's just held in by two clips. Ta da! And then there is the laptop itself. And of course, in this compartment right here, the uh, AC to DC wall adapter is also housed. There you go. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in. Um, before we do that, though, I'm going to give you a little tour around the laptop. And here it is. And this laptop is absolutely beautiful. Um, this laptop was manufactured in 1997. Um, so that means it's approaching 20 years old and it is in mint condition. Uh, despite its age, it looks absolutely wonderful. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look around the system. On the top, you can see the IBM ThinkPad badge. Let me go ahead and focus it so you can get a better view of that. There you go. Um, there are also two indicator lights on the top as well. At the back of the laptop, you can see one VGA port, a parallel port for printing, um, a good old serial port. As we move over to the right, you can see the power jack right here and then a PS2 port for a PS2 mouse. And then to the right of that, you can see the air outtake vent for the CPU heatsink. On the left side of the laptop, you can see two PCMCIA slots, um, and those were actually occupied. One held a 56K um, phone modem, and then the other one held, this is pretty interesting, a uh, Turbo, a IBM Turbo 16-4, token ring PC card, um, which I have no idea what this does, um, to be honest. I'm going to have to do some research on this and post a annotation uh, in the video because I have no clue uh, what this is to or what this does. So I'm uh, definitely going to have to do some research on this little uh, piece of hardware. On the right side, you can find a CD-ROM drive, floppy drive, audio controls, along with your headphone and microphone jacks. Right now you are looking at the bottom of the laptop. Right here you can see the compartment that houses the battery. Um, this compartment right here contains the RAM and CMOS battery. Over here you can see an information pane which states this laptop to 1997. Um, there is our Microsoft Windows 95 sticker. And then at the top you can see two ports which are most likely used for a docking station. So looking at the battery, we can see this is a 10.8 volt, 2.6 amp hour lithium ion battery, which is completely dead by the way. 
As you can see, I went ahead and opened up the RAM compartment. Um, this computer contains a total of 32 megabytes of RAM. There is 16 megabytes soldered to the motherboard itself, and then there is a 16 megabyte stick um, inserted into the slot right here. And then to the left of the RAM, you can see the CMOS battery, which I did replace because this PC would not let me boot up into Windows 95 uh, without replacing the CMOS battery, which was kind of annoying. And despite this laptop's age of nearly 20 years old, the hinges on this thing still feel incredible. Um, they are so smooth and they support the laptop's monitor very, very nicely. So you can see the keyboard right now, which has a slight amount of wear on it. Um, you can tell that it has been used, but all of the keys are still there and all of the silk screening is still intact. Um, so overall, the keyboard still looks pretty good. Um, as you can see, this laptop is not equipped with a trackpad, rather. Uh, it uses a track point, which I prefer over a trackpad um, because in my opinion, a track point is actually much easier to use. Uh, moving up, you can see the indicator lights for the laptop. You can also see the model 380ED printed right there. As you can see, the monitor is equipped with analog brightness adjustment. And then as we move up, you can see another IBM ThinkPad badge inside the laptop. Right here, you can see a small cutout for a microphone. And then under that is our Pentium MMX badge. Um, this computer is equipped with a Pentium MMX processor running at 166 megahertz. So I believe I covered pretty much everything on the outside. Let's go ahead and boot this up and take a look at the BIOS and then we'll boot into Windows 95. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the system on and show you guys the computer's BIOS, um, which is actually really neat. It's, it's way ahead of its time in my opinion. Okay, so my camera's about to die, so I'm gonna have to sum this up pretty quickly. Um, but take a look at this BIOS. It's actually using a really cool user interface. Um, you can see a little cursor right here. Um, you can actually use that to navigate around all of the various icons. Um, and as you can see, there are a ton of utilities in this BIOS. Um, you have a uh, testing utility, um, pretty much that lets you test all of the system devices. You can test the board, the memory, the display. Um, the hard drive, the floppy drive, the CD-ROM drive. Uh, I mean, this thing is just packed full of features. Um, startup, we can change our startup uh, boot priority. Password, I mean, that's pretty obvious. You can just set a password. I'm not going to click on that. Date and time um, allows you to change your date and time. Um, uh, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Nice, sleek interface right there. Um, configuration. Once again, pretty straightforward, allows you to configure your system devices. And then we have a option to restart um, and boot into Windows. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're not going to do too much with this laptops in terms of demonstration. Um, it doesn't have too many really neat applications installed and I don't have any applications that will run uh, on Windows 95 in my uh, archives. So 
Um, basically, we're going to take a look at our system specifications. Uh, we're going to try out a couple applications, including Microsoft Word, um, and then whatever else is installed on the system. And then that will be it for this video. So I have been testing this laptop out since I pulled it out this morning, um, and Windows 95 does run relatively well on this hardware. Um, system programs open within a reasonable amount of time, and it's definitely a usable computer. Let's go ahead and check out our hardware devices. I'm going to go to my computer and then open up the device manager. Um, if I can remember, if I can remember how to do this in Windows 95, it's been a while. So the, oh, yep, that's right, device manager, and then we can see all of our devices. So let's go down the list. Uh, display adapters. We have a Neo Magigraph uh, 128ZV um, display adapter. I believe that has around one megabyte of video memory. Floppy disk controllers, not really interested. Hard disk controllers, um, that's not giving us that much information. It is a standard ID hard drive. Um, this computer is using a two gigabyte hard drive. Not sure what speed it's rotating at. Our display has a max resolution of 800 by 600 pixels. Um, is there anything else that would be notable to show you guys? Um, additional system devices. I mean, really, there's not much else to show you guys, so I think I'm going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so now I'm just going to demonstrate some programs running on this computer. Let's go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. Um, this computer is not connected to the internet because I do not have a PCMIA Ethernet card at my disposal at this moment. I might wish I did because I wanted to try a Bitcoin mining experiment with this PC. Um, but I have no way to connect it to the internet, unfortunately. Oh my god, what version of Internet Explorer is this? Alright, what version are you? Let's see. Internet Explorer 5, there you go. <laughs> if you hated using Internet Explorer, try using Internet Explorer 5 and see how much more you hate it. All right, um, yeah, I wasn't trying to be um, too mean right there, but uh, Internet Explorer comes up. It was pretty slow, um, but taking into account this is a 20-year-old computer, um, I doubt it would be able to browse any modern web pages. Just my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Word. And you gotta love that old clunky hard drive sound. That is the best right there. All right, and let's see how responsive Microsoft Word is. Um, let's go ahead and try typing something. All right, so after it loaded everything, it actually um, became somewhat more responsive. Um, when it was still loading stuff, it took a while for the words to show up on the screen, but now um, everything seems to be a-okay. And spell check is even working on this. So let's go ahead and spell that right. Um, can we modify the text? Ooh, look at that. Uh, okay. Let's just play around with this for a little bit. And then let's change the color to orange. Alright, so Microsoft Word works just fine on this PC. Here's Excel is also installed on this PC, so let's go ahead and open that up. And let's see how responsive this is. All 
All right, and that works pretty well. I'm not going to go too in depth with this. Can we highlight all of the rows and columns? Yep, that is nice and smooth right there. Um, I mean, really, I think that's about it as far as Excel goes. I'm not going to mess around with this too much. We can enlarge the columns. Why don't we just make them huge? And how does that scroll? Yep, nice and smooth. That works well. And for the final demonstration, let's go ahead and see how well the file manager works. Alright, so I believe the hard drive is C. And I'm not going to go into too much... Um, I don't want to go too deep into the file manager because I have not wiped this hard drive. Um, and I'm not sure if the files on here would be confidential, so I'm not going to go... Um, uh, showing you guys the file names, but the file manager does work and is relatively snappy. Let's go into something that wouldn't have files on it. Let's try Windows. Okay, yeah, this isn't going to have any like confidential files or anything. Um, so from here, you can see um, all of our programs. Dude, these are all of Windows 95's files. Um, so I'm not going to mess around with this directory. Okay, so that's going to be about it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to like this video, and of course, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, HD images are up on my website at www.aacomputersandtechnology.com, so go ahead and check that out. Um, and as you can see as well, Paint is also working on this computer.